Welcome to Fort Collins, Colorado, home to the Colorado State Rams, settled at just over 5,000 feet, and we have a game that will live up to the altitude. This matchup today, part of the lifeblood of the sport, a rivalry game where the results will be remembered for a lifetime. As we see a squad from the Big 12, the Colorado Buffaloes, taking on a team from the Mountain West, the Colorado State Rams. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, let's get this thing started. And the Buffaloes will get us started with the opening kickoff. He'll start the return inside his five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. The Rams' offense takes the field. And the adrenaline is pumping on overdrive in games like this, guys, and it's crucial to get your emotions under control. No doubt. In rivalry games, you've got to limit the mental errors and you've got to limit the penalties because those will kill you, Bob. And you've got to come out under control. It means so much. We know that. The fans are all talking about it. But it's just football. You know, it's so important for offenses to want to keep third downs manageable. The way you do that is by having success like that, running the football on first down. The Rams come to the line in the hurry up. To throw, it's Fowler Nicolosi. Makes a connection. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. It's hard to run a route or get lost near the sidelines and understand exactly where you're at. Nice job understanding I was starting to get close to the sidelines, throttling down a little bit, catching the football and making sure I was in balance. The back goes in motion. He wants to throw. Unloads to the wideout. Working the middle. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. If they're going to sit back in zone, I'm going to make sure I know exactly what they're doing, find those holes, find those crossing patterns, and take advantage of that zone coverage. And the Rams getting set on first and ten. The give to the back. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. I know you want to prepare for every game the same way, but there's just something different about rivalry games, Jesse. It's because, Reese, I think players are aware that games like this define your legacy as a player. Your record in rivalry games is something that people are going to talk about for years and years down the road. You have got to show up and play your best football in games like this. And just wedges it ahead a bit before he's brought down. You know, runs like this oftentimes are like a boxer in a boxing match. Obviously, it's not a knockout punch, but these are body blows. And as the game goes on, these small gains are going to turn into longer runs. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And they sniff that draw out. With a draw, you know, you really have to sell that pass like you're going to throw the ball down the field. But... The defensive line, the defense was not biting it. You could tell they were ready for it. Came, got on the running back, got him on the ground quick, fast, and in a hurry. The Rams will try to pin them back with the punt. The punter going to get his first work of the afternoon. Making sure there's no return on that one as the punt sails out of bounds. The Buffaloes offense will try to get something going with their first possession. Here are our impact players for this game, and it goes beyond executing an assignment to make an impact in the game. Yeah, obviously we were talking to both coaching staffs this week, and we asked them who needs to step up and play well. They immediately pointed to these guys right here. They are the key for their respective teams. Yeah, and they don't always show up in the box score, but these are the guys are the leaders. These are the guys getting everybody organized and have to play well for their team to succeed. And the Buffaloes want to pick up the tempo. Keep it on the ground. They knock him down after he picks up five out to the 34. 
They have relished this tight victory since the last time these two got together, Paula. Guys, nah, just winning is beautiful. And when you beat your rival and you get those bragging rights, Palmer, it is a glorious thing for a whole year and sometimes long. Well, that's the best thing about rivalry games like this. For the winning team, whoever pulls this one out here today, their fans are going to be bragging about this one for a long time. He got loose, almost housed it, finally dragged down at the 32. Nice play design on that one. You make it easy for your quarterback, too, because it's easy to see what's happening right in front of you. Over the middle of the field, you can see where defenders are dropping. You can see where the soft spots are in zone coverage. And just a really nice job by the QB locating his guy and making an accurate play. To the air on first down. Throwing right. It's caught downfield. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. I think receivers really separate themselves with body control to be able to hang in the air but stay in bounds and keep that foot on the ground. Unbelievable job catching the football and staying in bounds near the sidelines. They're in the red zone, and they'll pass it. Nice defensive play to get a hand in there and knock it away. You know, it's so important for corners to be able to transition, right? You got to have real loose hips. You got to be able to change direction on a dime. And in zone coverage, when you see the ball thrown, you can break on it and force incompletions like that. And the incompletion brings up a second down. From the shotgun, they'll run it. And they'll stop him just short of the first down, just inches away from moving the sticks. I think the OC would have been really happy with a small game and, and an easier third down. But how about the effort by the running back to get this close? He, he saw the first down marker, tried to get to it, got close enough now where it's an easy situation on third down. And shoot, and I got fourth down in my pocket if I want to go for it. They'll try to run for it. <laughs> He is tackled, but it'll be a fresh set of downs. And this offense has really gotten to a nice rhythm here on their opening drive of the game. Running the ball, getting it down now into a goal-to-go situation. They really have established a bit of a physicality here early. Let's see if they can keep that up. The Buffaloes have it in scoring position on first and goal. Looking to pass. It's Sanders. And makes the grab in the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado! They can use this first score to sort of set the tone, guys, in this rivalry matchup. Man, doesn't this feel good to come out, score early, get the crowd involved, get the nerves out of the way, Palmer, when you're playing in a big rivalry game? Yeah, and I feel like momentum is always a big thing in any game. But in rivalry games, it's that much more important because everybody is going to feed off that first score now. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And he's got the extra point, and it's 7-0 to start this one. They took it 71 yards down the field, and they capped the drive with a four-yard touchdown pass. Kickoff team is on the field. They'll try to drive this one deep. He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. We will see what this Colorado State offense can get done this time. They go to the draw. Good, solid, determined run there. They'll mark him down at the 27. You want to talk about making it easy for an offensive coordinator. You pick up a bunch of yards on first down, make that second down really, really manageable. That's a great job by the offense. And the Rams want to crank the tempo. He'll try it again. They get him on the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. And I don't care if I get it by 2, by 20, by 30, by 40. I just, I just want to get the first down, understanding the situation, understanding where the sticks are. Doesn't have to be sexy, but I got to make sure I get to that stick, get to the first down mark. Now on first down from the 30. To the air, it's Fowler DiColosi. 
using the quick game. You know, the short passing game is a great go-to weapon for any offensive coordinator in the first quarter because it's reliable, obviously, but it also allows you to see how the defense is going to react and play you. So for coordinators, this can really open up the rest of your playbook for the rest of the game. This offense has a second down play. Out of the shotgun, they go to the ground. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, they're just trying to run the ball, but that time there was absolutely nowhere for the running back to go, and as a result, that's a tackle for loss. Offense breaks the huddle on third down. Pre-snap motion in the backfield. They'll snap it from the gun on third down. Got it in the middle. It's Horton. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chain. These two guys, just on the same wavelength, they make clutch connections all the time. And that's practice, man. That's all summer. That's all spring. Just so many hundreds and hundreds and thousands of balls where you know exactly when that guy's going to break. You know he's a stud. You're going to feed him, especially on these third down situations. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. And the running back didn't get much there. Nice job by the defense. You can tell they're focused in on this running back, on this run game, being physical, getting knockbacks, and limiting his carries. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Give to the back. And he won't quite get there, but boy, after that pickup, just a few inches to go for the first, an array of possibilities here. Just a simple power play, power football. Be strong, be big, be physical. Make it a fourth quarter game, make them feel you, keep them off balance. As they get set to snap it, just about to reach the end of the quarter. To the ground to try to pick up the first. Got room at the 35. This defense giving up ground as he's finally knocked down at the 26. Guys, Colorado has the lead here. And we've come to the end of the first as we take a moment to check out the stats so far. Back at it to open the quarter with this first down play. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. Powers forward, but stopped after a pickup of two to the 24. That's a really good job by the defense, wrapping them up, getting them on the ground, take away that run game, make them one-dimensional, put them in passing situations. Really good job by the defense. The Rams are in the hurry up. Gets it out fast. And he makes the stop after the catch and still some work to do to pick up that first down. Well, you can tell those two have been practicing the out route all offseason long. They look like they could have completed that in their sleep. And the Rams have pushed it inside the 20. Wide receiver shows motion. It'll be a run on third and short. And the defense holds firm. No pickup at all on that play. You got to have that defense you know you can go to in running situations. Your base defense where you say, okay, this is where I'm going to start, and I'm going to stop the run, stuff it up front. My guys play big up front. And then if I need to add some blitzes to it later on down the road, I can. But great job in the base defense making a play. Trying to show their strength with the run on fourth down. Defense makes a stop, but the chains move, and it's first and goal from the eighth. I got to challenge my guys all throughout the week. We get in these short run situations. Who's the bigger man? Who's the better man? Who's going to be more physical? These are the situations we practice all week. Challenge the manhood of the offensive line, and they come through in a big way. He'll do it himself. He pushes his way down to the four as they get closer and closer. Well, I'll tell you what, just watching this QB in the run game, he's going to break one at some point in this game. He's going to break a home run. 
Defense did a nice job getting him down there, but this guy, I'm telling you, he's just a play away from taking it to the house. Keep letting this guy do his thing. Keeping it on the ground with the single bat. He works his way all the way down to the three, and the defense is reeling. And with the stuff there, Jesse, on second down, this little third to mid-range, you got two downs. What are you thinking here? Maybe getting your quarterback out on the perimeter and giving him a run-pass option. See if you can get the defense in a bind. He'll put the tight end in motion. He'll keep it himself. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. But after getting stuffed on that run, you now have got fourth down. I I'm not into chasing points this early in the game. I think you just take the field goal. You try to pay this drive off and this opportunity to put something on the board, David. Well, and nowadays you have these analytical cards. And the coaches, they literally look at every situation. Is it more advantageous to go for it or kick it? That's how they'll make this decision. Splits the uprights right down the middle. They were able to get a field goal on the board, and now they'll kick it away. He'll bring it out. It's Horn. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Colorado has the ball back, and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. Able to pick up a couple before he's dragged down at the 19. And sticking to the run. I tell you what, a lot of teams that are really good are really stubborn, and they continue to run the football even with little success. So this offense is going to continue to focus on running the football, you can tell. And the Buffaloes racing to the line in the hurry up. They're trying to slow that rush down with the draw. Just searching and working for the running room as he gets it out to the 26. Offensive linemen love when you sneak in draws, when you sneak in screens. It holds these defensive linemen accountable. You want to rush the quarterback, you want to fly up field every single play, we'll sneak right behind you and get some yardage. Facing a third down and short from the 26. Back to throw, it's Sanders. Fires to the wideout. Picked off! And he will step out of bounds, but what a play to get the ball back for his offense. A lot of quarterbacks have so much confidence that they can fit the ball in tight windows. How about the defensive player right here making an unbelievable interception, forcing the turnover, big play, big momentum swing. Guys, we'll have another peek at this Rams offense. Always good to get points on a drive, David, but chip shot field goals can leave you a little empty. And I think it's great to get points, but the great teams get touchdowns in the red area. you got to get out there this time and execute a little better on this drive. You're absolutely right, David. Generally, the best red zone offenses are the ones that run the ball the best. So let's see if they can be a little bit more physical on this drive. Six-yard pickup on first down leaves them with second and four. He's looking to throw. Grabbed in the middle. It's Horton. And a nice grab with a defender right on him, and he's down at the 20. When you play zone coverage, you got a wide receiver that's a beast. It becomes very, very difficult. Got to make sure I play physical and maybe even shade the side of the wide receiver having a lot of success. They're in the red zone. First and 10 from the 20. Used the play fake, now to throw. And the defense, they've got him at the 27. This defense, they are tenacious, and they've got guys up front that are athletic and that are so strong and then can collapse the pocket. You saw it right there in that play action attempt.
That offense having to deal with the last thing you want on first down, giving up a sack as they come up to the line on second down. They're going to test that run defense to the right here. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. Well, he was trying to do it all by himself. At the end of the day, it's a tackle for loss. Uh, I mean, the number of tackles he broke at some point, somebody's got to get blocked to help the guy out a little bit. Man, the defense was like a bunch of zombies on that last play. They just would not stop chasing that ball carry. On third and long, he'll need to push it downfield. Got his man to the left. And he's not going to get there. The defense stands tall and makes the stop. Well, this offense is giving a lesson right now on how to fight through adversity because first and second down was ugly, but they come up with that huge completion to now set up a manageable fourth down opportunity to keep this drive alive. They'll try to get something out of this drive and kick the field goal here on fourth down. It is good! After that last field goal drive, they're set to kick it away. He'll bring it out. It's Horn. Rolling the dice to bring it out of the end zone did not work out as he stopped at the 13. And the Colorado offense is coming back onto the field. They'll try the run. Picks his way ahead. He'll get five out to the 17-yard line. I like this guy as a running back because he can run between the tackles and he can also go outside. He can really do it all. And the Buffaloes will hustle to the line. It's the two-minute warning, and we'll see if the offense can tack a little something extra on their lead before the break. Let's see what they've got on second down. Back to pass, it's Sanders. And it'll be incomplete. This defense is physical in pass deep. This defense has a lot of speed, especially in the secondary. You saw that speed. That defender got to that receiver so quick, and because of the hit, incomplete pass. Third and short, they've got them back up inside the 20, and the D can get the ball back here. From the gun, wants to pass. Grabs it in the middle. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. Well, we know this guy is special, and because of that, his quarterback is looking to him on critical down and distances. There on that third down, there was no question. It wouldn't have mattered if he was single covered, double covered, man zone. That's where he was going with it, and the big time playmaker outside picks up the first. Didn't pick up a lot there, moved it forward just a few. A nice job by the defense there tackling the catch and smothering the tight end. They know this offense is going to try to find him in the passing game in a lot of different situations. That time, perfect coverage, and nice job bringing the big guy down. Not easy to do. Five wide receiver formation on second and nine. Quick strike complete. At the 45 on his way. And he was loose and not stopped until he gets to the 47-yard line. How nice is it as a quarterback when you don't have to throw post routes to get great stats? No, I can just throw it quickly to one of the fastest players in the entire nation and let him burn this defense. The Buffaloes with the first and ten. He's going to pass. Quickly complete. And he broke one tackle on the way to a solid pickup there. The offense will stop the clock and use one of its timeouts. That quarterback has a hose. That dude could throw it to a car wash and not get it wet. Great job of putting that ball on a line to his wide receiver. And that's going to fall to the ground incomplete. That was a physical matchup there. Third down coming. Now let's see if the offense can bail itself out after the second down misfire. They turn to the passing game on third and short. Quickly complete. 
And the defense makes the immediate tackle, but he has enough for the first down. When you're a playmaker like this guy is, your coaches are going to dial up plays intended for you, especially on third down. That's what you saw in that last play. There was no question where the quarterback was going with that football. All week long, they decided on the biggest downs of this game, we're going to target our best player, and we're going to make sure that he gets looks. It doesn't matter what the coverage is, and you saw it right there on that play. It's definitely the wide receiver's job to create space, right? So whether you're running a go or you're running a hitch like this right here, I got to find a way to push off legally or just create a little bit of space to get some positive yards. A shot for the end zone. He just got rid of that one to save the down, didn't see anything he liked. Well, even though that was an incompletion, I wouldn't be surprised if this secondary wants to start playing deeper coverages. This offense has shown that they're willing to be aggressive. They've got a lot of speed. This defense cannot allow any big plays here in the second. On third and short, they'll try to convert through the air. Makes the grab. They make the stop at the five-yard line, and they've got it first and goal. The offense calls a timeout to stop the clock. Running out of time here in the first half, they're going to have to be efficient to put some points on the board before the break. Looking to throw, it's Sanders. Fires to the end zone. Pass on the way, and it's picked off. And they'll drag him down after a good return on the interception. This is obviously not a great start for this quarterback here. Two interceptions already in this game. He's got to do a much better job with his decision making. They'll be able to snap it one more time. Let's see how aggressive they are on first and ten. They'll run it. Looks as if he'll work his way forward and get it up to about the 11-yard line. That's going to wrap up the first half here, and now we join Kevin with the halftime update. Fellas, what an environment there today. All the animosity and flat-out hatred that comes with a good old-fashioned rivalry game on display in that first half. And we have to start this halftime breakdown by addressing the play of this elite wide receiver. This is clearly a young man who, once he's finished playing on Saturdays, he's going to be playing on Sundays. The kid has different gears. He has a knack for finding gaps in the defense. And I can't remember a college player with that kind of catch radius. That said, let's get back to the field and our guys in the booth to see who comes out on top of this rivalry contest. The Rams will boot it away to start the second half. On the run from inside his own five. He was looking for more running room, but none to be found as he stopped at the 23. Colorado has the ball back, and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. And in a low-scoring game like this one, David, every possession is magnified. And I think more than anything, it just gets frustrating. And you got to put that behind you. you got to see what this defense has been doing to be so successful. Caller, now use it against them. Yeah, David, I think for a play caller, this is tough, right? It's like you have to have the perfect play on just to get a first down. In these types of games, I think you're just trying to get guys out in space. See if a dude can break a tackle. Maybe that generates an explosive play, and it breaks this trend. Back to throw. It's Sanders. He's got his man. Still on his feet at the 45. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. And that's just a great individual effort by the wide receiver. He catches this ball way short of the sticks, but because he's able to make the defender miss, now he's able to get the extra yards and turn that into an explosive play. And the Buffaloes headed quickly to the line. Going up top on first down. Catch in the middle. It's Horn. He stopped just a chain link or two away from the first down and sets them up beautifully here. When you play zone coverage, everybody drops back. Everybody has eyes on the quarterbacks. You're not really looking at the wide receivers a lot of times, so they can slip in those little cracks, and the quarterback can really make precise throws. Great job, great play, great throw, great game. Using his legs, it's Hayden. 
And he's brought to the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. All right, defense, that's, that's what we can't do. We can't give up this many chunk yards on the ground. Got to commit more guys to the line of scrimmage. Got to get those running backs on the ground. That's way too easy. And the Buffaloes are marching down the field. Comes out throwing on first down. That's caught. It's Horn. Nice job by the quarterback there throwing the hitch route against zone coverage. You can't stare at him. If you do that, then you allow the flat defender to get underneath it, and that might be a pick six. So really good job by the quarterback there using his eyes to manipulate the defense. Completion a little short of the sticks. It's second down. He's looking to throw. Fires to the middle. And it slips through his fingers incomplete. That would have been a huge gain if he could have squeezed it. And it's so hard to play defense nowadays. You've got a strike zone where you can hit people. You get flagged for targeting. You get flagged for pass interference. That was beautiful. Great job in the end zone, making it a hard window to throw into. And when he caught it, making him feel you. Looking to move the chains. They throw it complete to the left. Excellent job working through the air there, finding a hole in that defense and picking up a first down. We asked earlier this week, who's your favorite receiver? And of course, he said the open one, but we know who he really wants to go to on third down. The best one. <laughs> I mean, I think the open one, obviously the politically correct answer, but you want to find the guy that you got that great chemistry with. You know exactly where he's going to be. You got that bond and that trust. And that's a very productive first down play and bringing up second and three. Keep pounding away at this defense and make them play the run. If you can get this many a chunk, they're going to have to commit more guys to the box, more guys to the run. Then you open it up for the passing game. Going to work in the red zone, they can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. Going for six. Reels it in in the end zone. Touchdown, Buffaloes! And it's so underrated. The, the relationship between a QB and a wide receiver, the timing, the ability to know where he's going to be and be accurate with the football, that's what leads to nice touchdowns, Jesse. Well, and the chemistry between these two guys has to be great when you're throwing into the end zone because coverage is going to be tight. The throw might not be perfect, but this is something these two guys have been repping in practice over and over and over, and it's paying dividends now on game day. The AT unit on the field. And they kick it through for the extra point, and they have an eight-point lead. 76 yards on the drive for the touchdown, and they close the deal with the seven-yarder for the score. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. From inside his own 10, let's see what he gets. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. Colorado State takes over the rim. Offense returns to the field. They're trying to get to him. Can't quite make the connection there. Might have led him a little too much. Bad news on that play, it's an incompletion. The good news is the quarterback knew if his guy wasn't going to catch it, nobody was with that ball landing out of bounds. And the Rams moving quickly to the line. To the air, it's Fowler Nicolosi. Flips it out in the flat. And that defensive penetration gave him no chance, and he is ridden out of bounds. You make up the game plan and not a lot on the play sheet for this. Third and long from inside their own 20. Looking downfield, and he needs a bunch. That's reeled in. It's Horton. And sure, tackling there to keep him from getting to the first down marker. You got to love that. On defense, one of the most critical statistics out there is how do you play on third down? How do you prevent the opponent from keeping drives live? Right there, tackling the catch. You gave up the completion. whoop de do. You set up fourth and long. You're going to get the ball back. Go get some water and celebrate. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. 
Not going to risk a return here. Calls for the fair catch and makes it just around the 30-yard line. And the Colorado offense is coming back onto the field. Jesse looking to take it down the field for back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. I think it's really important for them moving forward, too, to have a lot of balance, right? You want to be able to keep this defense guessing, Pollock. Yeah, and you got me searching for answers after that last drive. You stack another drive on top of this, their defense's heads are going to be spinning all over the place. Linebackers trying to create some confusion. Offense gets set for second down. They'll run play action. And that pass will be jarred loose on second down. That brings up third down. Well, that looked like it was going to be a completion, but how about the defender making the hit, forcing the incompletion? Lining up, trying to convert this third and short from the 40. They'll try to power their way ahead. Coming through with that third down conversion, and they'll mark it at the 43. And I just love when guys know exactly where the sticks are. You could tell, ran with purpose, finished through the sticks, and got just enough for the first down. And a nice job up front, too, right? Good communication. Everybody knew where they had to go. Hat on a hat, work the double teams, and get some push. Might as well give it to him again. And he'll find enough running room to get it just short of midfield at the 49. Well, I know it's sexy to throw the football, but if you can pound it away and get these kind of gains, they will just add up, wear the defense down, get first downs, and ultimately get some points. Got six on first down. Now a lot of options on second and four. To the ground with the back. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. That play had zero shot. They got to do a better job up front, creating some running lanes. The running back before he could go anywhere, getting tackled, nowhere to go. The Buffaloes want to move quickly. Looking downfield, it's Sanders. Can't hang on to the ball. He had it right in his chest, and it'll be fourth down. And money down is where you see defenses really understand where the sticks are, play great pass defense, know what's coming, and get off the field. And the Buffaloes line up to punt it away. He'll bring it back. It's Horton. Cover guys do their job, and they get him stopped at the 22-yard line. We will see what this Colorado State offense can get done this time. Boy, three and out last time, David. They'd like to be more productive this time around. Yeah, in the last drive, nothing really clicked. No rhythm. Got off the field really, really quickly. They need to put something together here, Palmer. Yeah, David, bad execution on that last drive. So they got to take a collective breath and start playing like a unit on this drive. After picking up a couple at second and eight. He's looking to throw. He got his hands on it, but couldn't hold on to it. And what a time that would have been for their first pick of the game. Well, a great job in coverage on the back end by the defense. He just got to finish the play. That should have been a pick. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. Third and long, and he'll try to throw for it. Looking to the big tight end. It's caught. Bust through behind his pad. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. Well, Reese, you and I were talking about this before the game. How is this defense going to be able to deal with all the speed they have offensively? You saw them just rip off a big play. And, Jesse, now their head's spinning just a little bit. Give up a big chunk play, and it's right back at them. Give to the running back. And he has a solid game before the defense bottles him up. 
there's just so much for this defense to think about right now. They've had strong side runs thrown at them. Now the counter. They know that this offense can work in the play action off of all these base runs, too. So much offensive volume this defense needs to worry about at this point in the game. Looking for a man. It's Fowler Nicolosi. Wide open downfield. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. Well, how about the offense setting that play up? We've seen earlier in the game a couple shorter throws. They're just trying to suck those safeties closer to the line of scrimmage, anticipating that they would get an opportunity to take a shot. They called the perfect play at the perfect time right there. They're looking to pass from the red zone. Makes the grab. They will score. Touchdown, Colorado State. Great example of how a second half can really change everything for a team. No doubt. First half looked bad. It looked like it was bleak. It looked like it was ugly. But now you're starting to get it turned around. More drives like this is what's needed. They got the touchdown, but now they want the two to tie this baby up. He wants to throw it. He makes the grab for the two and ties the game. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And they finish it up with a 15-yard scoring toss. All tied up and just about set to kick it away. He'll take the return, try to get better field position. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Colorado has the ball back, and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. Makes the stop at the 33, but it's a 15-yard gain. Well, this is one of the fastest quarterbacks in college football, and that's why the option's a good idea, because if he can get out in space and he has a chance to get downfield, he is really difficult to tackle, and he's very difficult to catch, as you saw in that last play, getting a first down. Big catches, big plays, tons of yards through three quarters for these two guys. These two teams about to find out what they're made of as we open the fourth all tied up. Out of the gun, the inside give. You want to make sure to maximize those types of runs, and he gets it out to the 41. Coaches always harp about staying ahead of the chains, and when you can run with that type of efficiency on first down, man, you are doing just that. And the Buffaloes in the hurry up. Dropping back, it's Sanders. He hurls one deep down the left side. He's got it downfield for a huge game. Touchdown, Bucks! And they've moved out front here in the fourth. Yeah, and that's simple, but it's not easy. It's a go route. Like, th th that receiver's streaking straight down the outside of the field, and my job as a quarterback is to put that ball up in the air, keep it away from the safety. He does just that. Receiver comes down with the catch. Nice pitch, nice catch, touchdown. Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. The extra point is good, and now in the fourth, they're up by a touchdown and an extra point. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And they cap things off with a touchdown pass from 59 yards out. The kickoff team out there and ready to go. Here he comes from inside his own five. 
He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Guys, we'll have another peek at this Rams offense. They unleashed an aerial assault last time that took them right to the end zone, David. So, Reese, with that drive, I think you've accomplished something you wanted to accomplish. Make this defense think. You put them back on their heels. Now, shoot, Palmer, you might be able to slip a few runs in on this drive to really jack them up. Yeah, I like that idea, but I also like the fact that speed kills, and they've got it at the receiver position. So if you've got one-on-one -on -one matchups, man, take advantage. He's going to pass on second down. Fires to the right. And he really needed to hold on to that one, but it was not loose, and third down is coming. Well, the quarterback knew he wanted to go to his tight end on that play. He's a big physical target, but it was the hit on the play that forced the incompletion. This defense has kept him backed up. Now one more stop, and they can get off the field on third and long. Dropping back, it's Fowler Nicolosi. Got a man in the middle. Love to see these third down conversions on offense, and they're out to their own 39-yard line. Well, look, that wasn't a touchdown. That was a massive play for this offense. They needed some momentum. They needed to find a rhythm, and what better way than converting on third down? Awesome job by the quarterback getting through his progression. Pulls it and fires to the left. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. Offenses want to get the ball to their playmakers really fast. And they try to throw the wide receiver screen, but how about the defender? He was right there in his space, got him on the ground as soon as he caught it. He was ready for that play. The Rams come to the line in the hurry up. On second down, he'll fire. Going over the top. Oh, he toast the coverage, got it deep downfield. Touchdown, Colorado State. Made the snag and strolled his way into the end zone. Quarterback's abilities to read the field is huge. And also the anticipation, the time to be able to throw the football, Jesse, and hit a guy in stride so he can get run after the catch and get in the end zone. That was a nice job by the quarterback. Yeah, it's critical, David. Listen, a lot of times, touchdown passes aren't thrown into the end zone. You've got to read the coverage, hit the open guy, and let him do the rest. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And the extra point was good, and we are all tied up in the fourth. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And they finish with a 62-yard pass for the score. Here comes the kickoff as we are all tied up in the fourth quarter. The returner will field it and try to do some business. And the coverage team able to make the tackle. And the Colorado offense is coming back onto the field. They'll give it to the back. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. And I think a lot of times when offenses run these counters, you're going to fake one way, right? Pull guys the other direction. If you can get some penetration really quickly, get behind those pullers, you got a chance to get in the backfield just like right there and create a TFL. After getting knocked back to open this drive, it's second and 12. From the gun, he leaves it with the back. Across the 25, he's got room. Gets it to the 42-yard line, and that's a first down. When you talk about creating big plays in the running game like this, this makes the game really easy. Actually, when you've got a guy like this that you can hand it to with this much speed and elusiveness, just hard to bring down in the open field. What a big gain for the offense. The offense showing motion from the tight end, trying to get a read on the D. We'll give him a couple on that one, second and eight coming up. And the defense doing a great job committing to the run. When you commit to the run like this, obviously you can give up some plays in the passing game, but you got to stop the run first. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. Now 
power football with the run. And he didn't have a whole lot of operating room after the juke. Not much room to run. They're strong and they're strong. Defensive tackles, they're strong. They're such big jokers in the middle where they just lock out those offensive linemen. And running backs, listen, they don't have much of a chance. When you got that 300-plus pound guy grabbing you around the shoulder pad, you tend to go to the ground pretty quickly. From the shotgun, the inside give. That'll get the job done and move the chains, and they'll mark the ball at the 45. Well, they came into this game today knowing that this guy was going to have to leave his mark in this one, Tote in the Rock, and he's done that. He's come up with some big plays, and he continues to do that here late at a juncture where they've got to continue running it if they're going to win. The Buffaloes want to pick up the tempo. He's looking to throw it. Receiver looks it in. It's complete. And a good job in coverage there as they stop it after just a few. We're trying to throw the wide receiver screen to pick up that first down, but the defense just too much speed getting to the ball carrier on that one. Tempo and overdrive. Looking downfield, it's Sanders. It's complete on the right side. Good, solid pick up there. Now they can start to smell it with a first down at the 31. This is a very tough slot receiver to cover if you're a linebacker because of how quick and how shifty he is. You never seem to know which way he's going, and he always seems to create an open space for his QB. And the Buffaloes have it with a first and 10. From the gun, they'll try the middle. Nose is ahead to the 30-yard line, a pickup of one. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Trying to impose their will with the run. And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. I think Jesse and Reese could call offensive plays for any team if they're having this much success on the ground. It starts with the ground game, right? Like, you can chew up these kind of plays. Then I can play action later on and take shots. But right now, defense has first got to stop the run game that's been chewing them up. From the gun, the running back has it. And the defense stops him just short of the first down. Maybe needed a few more chain links to move the sticks. And that would be the definition of first down success. Putting yourself in a good position. It's second and inches. I can do whatever I want next. I can take a shot down the field. I can run the football and get a new set of downs. Like, nice first down execution. Off play action. Oh, the ball popped out. That's a way to mess up a drive. How about that alert play from the defense to corral that fumble? He's at the 40. The 20. And in for the score. What a turn as they take the lead. Now for the extra point try late in the game. The extra point is good, and now in the fourth, they're up by a touchdown and an extra point. That is a defensive player's dream. Ball sitting there, chance to scoop it up, run with it, and they don't stop you until the band starts playing. The returner will field it and try to set up his offense in great field position. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. He wastes no time and comes out throwing. And it's picked off for the third time today. He was dreaming of getting a few more on that return, but they'll take it in business at the 32. Well, 
Linebackers moving, trying to confuse the quarterback. Colorado State takes over the Ram. Offense returns to the field. One possession game, getting late. First order of business, just take care of the football. So they call this situation four-minute offense, where you're trying to run the football and throw high-percentage passes to maintain possession and bleed the clock. This is a very difficult point of the game to execute at a high level. Though. Yeah, and listen, what you understand as an offense is if I get one or two first downs, this ball game's over. And that's your sole objective. Not scoring, take care of the football, get a few first downs, walk out with a W. I think if you're offense here, the game boils down to this one play on third down with the lead late. If you get the first down, that's ball game. There's not enough time left for the defense to get it back and go march down the field. So let's dial up our best play offensively. Let's make sure our best players are touching the football. Quick timeout call by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. Looking for a productive play on first down. Quarterback's just going to take a knee. 